in this lecture we are going to talk about crazy constraints so we will be looking at various budget constraints now in the first case we take good one to be ration so that the consumer cannot consume more than x1 star units of good one so this is good one this is good two now the consumer cannot consume more than x1 star units of good one so originally the budget line was this and this portion together so it was this line uh, where the horizontal intercept was m by p1 and the vertical intercept was m by p2 so this was the budget line but now uh, the good one is ration so the consumer cannot buy more than x1 star units of good one as a result the budget line for x1 star units of good one remains the same after that since the uh, consumer cannot buy more units of good one therefore the budget line becomes vertical line as a result this represents the budget set of the consumer and this portion is excluded because the consumer cannot buy more than x1 star units of good one now let's look into another case now in this case uh, the consumer has to pay a tax t only on the consumption of good one in excess of x1 star so when the consumer is consuming less than x1 star units of good one then the consumer has to pay whatever he was paying so if we assume that our original budget line is this this solid portion and this dotted portion so this is our budget line initially which passes through m by p2 and m by p1 that is the horizontal and the vertical intercepts are m by p1 and m by p2 respectively now uh, since uh, since the consumer does not have to pay any tax for x1 uh, star units of good one therefore the budget line for x1 star units remains the same now after that since the consumer has to pay a tax t on the consumption of good one it means that the consumer for the consumer the price of good one increases why because it is paying p1 to the producers and it it is paying tax t per unit of the good that he purchases to the government as a result the net price of good one becomes p1 by p1 plus t therefore the horizontal intercept becomes m divided by p1 plus t instead of m divided by p1 and m divided by p1 plus t is less than m divided by p1 so basically when the price of good one increases the slope of the budget line increases why because the slope of the budget line initially was p1 by p2 negative now the slope of the budget line is minus p1 plus t by p2 now since the numerator has increased therefore clearly the slope of the budget line has increased uh the slope of the budget line has increased and as a result after x1 star units of good one we will have a steeper slope of the budget line we have a steeper budget line therefore uh the budget constraint is this blue region in this blue region instead of this blue plus dotted area therefore we see that the budget constraint or basically uh, the budget set of the consumer reduces when uh, the consumer has to pay a tax so this region is excluded now uh, let's look at third case the case of a uh, lump sum subsidy or a lump sum tax so if the if the government imposes a lump sum tax on the consumer so the consumer has to pay a tax capital t to the government no matter um, the number of the units that the consumer consumes so this lump sum tax will be like a decrease in the income of the consumer so if this green line was the initial budget constraint with the uh, horizontal intercept m by p1 and the vertical intercept m, m by p2 now when there is a lump sum tax t then the income of the consumer reduces from m to m minus t as a result the budget line shifts inwards parallelly it's basically like a decrease in the income of the individual therefore the horizontal in intercept becomes m minus t by p1 vertical intercept becomes m minus t by p2 therefore we see that whenever there is a lump sum tax t which is imposed by the government on the consumer then the budget line shifts parallelly inwards 
the opposite of this is a lump sum subsidy so if the government gives the consumer a lump sum subsidy of s it will be like an increase in the income of the individual and we know that when the income increases then there is a shift in the budget line outwards so as we can see the budget line shifts from this green line to the yellow line and it is a parallel shift outwards this happens because of the lump sum subsidy s and the horizontal intercept becomes m plus s by p1 and the vertical intercept becomes m plus S by P2 basically because net income the consumer now which is available with the consumer to spend on goods 1 and goods 2 is uh, M plus S instead of M which was there earlier. Now let's look into another case. Now in this case the consumer is receiving food coupons of rupees C by the government. Now first let us suppose that the consumer receives rupees C by the government. So it's like a subsidy. The uh, consumer receives directly rupees C by the government no matter what. In that case, what will be the budget line? The budget line will be this. I'm drawing it next to it. So the budget line will be this. So this will be the budget line if rupees C is given by the government. But now the government says that um, uh, the that rupees C can be spent only on food. What is meant is that the consumer is getting food coupons of rupees C from the government. Now since these food coupons are not tradable and these food coupons can be used only to purchase food and no other commodity. As a result, uh, the budget line will be, uh, will be the blue line, blue solid line that is shown in the diagram. Why? Now because uh, since the consumer receives food coupons and no cash, therefore the consumer won't be able to consume more than M by P2 amounts of good 2. However, since the consumer can spend rupees C more on food, therefore the income that is available to be spent on food if the consumer consumes 0 units of X2 will be M plus C. And as a result, the horizontal intercepts of the new budget line becomes M plus C by P1. As a result, the new budget line becomes uh, the blue solid line that is shown in the diagram. How do we calculate this point? Now, um, this is the point up to which the consumer spends rupees C, that is the food coupons that he has got. So, up to this point, the consumer can consume maximum amounts of X2 while he, while he is using the food coupons of rupees C uh, to purchase food. Now, from food coupons of rupees C, how many units of good X1, a uh, good one the consumer can purchase? The consumer can purchase C divided by P1 because C is the income uh, of the consumer when he is only using food coupons to purchase food. Therefore, uh, this point is essentially C by P1 because when the consumer is consuming C by P1 units of good 1, he can consume M divided by P2 units of good 2 because he is spending the entire income that he earns on good 2 and he is using the entire food coupons worth to be C on purchasing of food. Now, if the consumer buys more than C divided by P1 units of good 1, then the consumer will have to reduce the consumption of good 2. Why? Because in purchasing C divided by P1 units of good 1, all the food coupons um, has been used and as a result now the consumer will have to use a proportion of his income or a portion of his income to purchase good 1 which means sacrificing some uh, amounts of good 2. As a result, the budget line is the solid blue line that is shown in the diagram. Now, uh, let's look into yet another case. Now, what's happening in this case is that the consumer receives X1 star units of good at a price of P1 dash. And therefore, all units cost a price P1 which is greater than P1 dash. So, this uh, situation basically represents the case of public distribution system in India where the government provides subsidies to the government for the initial few kilograms of grains that is bought by these poor people. So, for example, in India, 35 kgs of grain are provided at subsidized rates. So, in this case, if X1 star represents 35 kgs, 
if it represents 35 kgs then uh, basically the price of x1 star units of good one is less because of subsidies because the consumer is receiving x1 units of food at the price p1 dash which is less than p1 as a result the slope of the budget line decreases and we have this solid blue line portion as a uh, part of our budget line with the slope of minus p1 dash by p2 where p1 dash is basically less than uh, p1 now after x1 star units of good one since the consumer is now purchasing at the market price therefore the slope returns back to the normal the slope now again becomes minus p1 by p2 because the price is the same the price of good one is the same now p1 as compared to the initial price so uh, we have this budget line which is parallel to the initial one thus the solid blue line in the diagram shows the budget constraint and this clearly represents the case of the public distribution system in india where the first few quantities of food are provided at a subsidized rates by the government and after that the consumer has to go the poor people have to go to the open markets to purchase their grains um, you can calculate this point a1 using simple mathematics it comes out to be m minus p1 dash x1 star uh, divided by p2 why because the consumer has spent uh, some portion of his income in buying x1 star units so if the consumer's income was m the consumer has spent uh, p1 dash x1 star so the consumer has spent this amount on purchasing good one p1 dash because there is a reduced price for the first x1 star units of good now since the consumer is left with this much uh, to be spent on good two therefore this divided by the price of the good two will be give will give us the uh, units of good two that the consumer can buy and that is how we calculate the coordinates of point a so this represents the case of public distribution system in india now uh, let's look into uh, both of them simultaneously so the left one shows the case of public distribution system in india where uh, where basically uh, the first few kgs the first few units of food are provided um, at a subsidized rate after which the consumer has to buy from the open market so the budget line looks like this and this is the case where food coupons are being provided by the government which are not tradable it is essential to mention here that the food coupons they are non-tradable so the food coupons are non-tradable because if the food coupons were tradable if the consumers were able to sell the food coupon they could have easily sold the food coupons and got money and it would have been equivalent to like uh, giving them a cash subsidy therefore we see how these two cases are different very recently food coupons were being introduced in bihar and as a result it represents this case however a normal public distribution in india represents this case now we will look into uh, the case of uh, volume discounts now volume discounts can also take two cases now the first case that we will talk about is that the consumer if the consumer buys more than x1 dash units of good one he will have to pay a lower price for all the units bought after x1 dash it's important to note this the consumer have to pay lower price for all the units bought after x1 dash of good one x1 dash units of good one so um, suppose there were no volume discounts what would be the budget line the budget line will be a this portion and this portion so the budget line initially would have been a c b so this would have been the initial budget line now uh, since the volume discounts are given after x1 dash units of good one therefore for x1 dash units of good one the budget line remains the same ac but it says that if you buy more than x1 dash units of good one then uh, there will be lower price for all the units that are bought after x1 dash so for the units that are bought after x1 dash there will be lower price so there will be a price p1 dash which is lower than p1 as a result the slope of the budget line will be less 
as compared to the initial slope of the budget line and we see that the budget line is like this it, it's basically a swivel from cb to cd so it's basically a swivel from cb to cd and as a result we have a new budget line which is basically a c d looking at case 2 case 2 is very similar but we will look um, how it differs now in this case if the consumer buys x1 dash units of good one or less the price remains the same but if the consumer buys more than x1 dash units of good one then he will have to pay lower price for every unit of good one so uh, this can be an example of like for 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 first 20 pages of xerox you will have to pay one page one rupee per xerox page so it will cost you at least 20. now after 20 pages all pages will cost you 50 passive so suppose you get 40 copies of xerox it will cost you rupees 20 only at 50 passive per xerox page so it represents that case where the price lowers for every unit of good one while the previous case was the price is lower for every unit in addition to x1 dash like every unit that is purchased after x1 dash units of good one so again here the initial budget line is a c b now uh, till x1 dash units of good one the budget line will remain the same because no volume discounts are present now after x1 dash units the price lowers for all the units of good one so suppose uh, the price lowered for all units of good one irrespective of uh, the fact that after x1 dash units of good one the price would have increased so if the price was lowered then the budget line would have shifted from acb so the budget line would have shifted from acb to acd if it was a normal case of a decrease in the price it would have shifted from acb to aed basically but um, here for x1 star units it remains the same but there is a lower price for every unit after this so we will have this portion of the budget constraint so let me use a different color so we have this portion till x1 star which coincides with the initial budget line and we will have this portion after x1 dash units of good one which coincides with the budget line had there been a lower price for all units of good one therefore the final budget line becomes this so the final budget line is a sorry so the final budget line is a c e d and the budget set in this case is all this portion all this portion that lies inside so this is the budget set thus we have seen uh, two cases of volume discounts first one was where if you buy more than x1 dash units of good one then you will have to pay a lower price for all the units of good one that you buy after x1 dash and the second case was that where you have to pay a lower price for all the units of good one like that of the xerox copy shop example